Coco G, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us here today. Um, I'd like to start back when you were in university as a student and you were studying international relations. Um, at that point in time, what did you hope to be? So frankly, I have to say, so just a common student. So my personal expectation is, so what I will become just like a diplomat or the teachers in my own department or so that's all so we have no any other choice so i think at that time so if you ask any children hey what do you want to be no one reply to you so i want to be a politician mm. so this is <laughs> the very natural in our country but because of the political social and economic situations so the time of our country pushed us to be a politician what was the changing point for you when did you decide okay i want to be a politician my own way of thinking is so always thinking what is right or what is wrong so, so even in the childhood so i don't want to blind in front of me so those wrongdoing or so and so and then so i try to learn some of the biography of the uh, ibrahim lingon or so and then the castro <laughs> or the and the bojo onsen general onsen our national hero or so and so so i envy so those people who sacrifices for their country general onsen is our national hero so we learn so and then so very coincident of our career so he is the student leaders at his time and from the student background just uh, gradually finally to be a national leader so i am being so much about the general onsen was that what led you to lead a rally in yangon university in 1988 so actually in 1987 the government announced the demonetizing statement so people are very frustrated but they don't know how to respond so most of the people so they strive really hard for their daily earning so those nyama currency suddenly become the worthless notes so people are very angry but they don't know how to respond but so our classmates so talking about the country situations so even though we have a plenty of natural resources and also the so our people so i dare say so very talented people so they so very easy to learn anything i i hope so although such a country becomes the least developed countries so we cannot accept such a situation in 1988 much the R&D Rangoon Institute of Technology and Civilian clash between each other so and then the authority uh, shut down the universities and colleges and then reopen again in June so we try to reorganize our students to ask for the student union and the for the detainee students to be released or so and so so and then they shut down the university and colleges again so we try to reorganize the different names of the student groups to have a all bama federation of student unions so 28 august 1988 we hold a student meeting at the very exact location of the student union buildings so in 1962 our historic student union building uh, demolished by the military government in 1962 so we try to revitalize our student union at that same place so at that meeting a uh, student conference agree me to be a vice president of the student unions at that time so from then on we try to mobilize our people up to the tetra eight mm -hmm. movement So we call for the August 8, 1988. So 8, 8, 8, 8. Mm -hmm. So we call for the whole country, the Tetra Eight Revolution. 
But did you think that your pro-democracy activities would have landed you in prison? Honestly, to, at the very beginning, we are afraid of to spend our life in prison. So this is a very natural. But uh, if we cannot move forward, who er, whoever else will save our country. So that's why we encourage our friends, each other, and to go on. That's very brave of you. I mean, it's a huge sacrifice. Could you maybe talk to us a little bit about your time in prison? I mean, how were you treated? Um, were you, did you have any contact with the outside world? If I read all about my prison life, I will take about two decades. <laughs> <laughs> so at the beginning, so I'm scared how to survive in the prison. Also. Oh. I was in a solitary confinement. So this is the, how do you call it? The dead, those prisoners, they have already sentenced the death penalty. So in that cell, so I was alone. So I think back the some of the student leader so sentence the death penalty. Tim Wu. So Tim Wu is the nineteen seventy-four student leader. So they bravely to face the death sentence. So I'm thinking the last day of the Tim Wu. So and then another one is Captain Ong Chow Mien. Captain Ong Chow Mien. So he was sentenced the high treason in the so under the socialist regime. So he also bravely to face the death sentence. So and then, so I'm thinking, what I'm doing for the death sentence? So why they put me in the cell for those death sentence prisoners. So finally, I try to make calm, okay, whatever I try to face. Was there a particular memory of prison that you, it's still very strong in your mind now? So very coincident is, so why I was in prison, my mother passed away. So I didn't know in advance. So one afternoon, the prison authority called me. Hey, you put on wearing the civilian clothes. So this is a very strange for me. Hey, you prepare to go out. So, and then I'm surprised to go along with the authority. And at the gate of the prison, the, the, authority, the authority acknowledge. So, hey, you know in advance about your mother? No. So today is the funeral procession of your mother. I'm suddenly shocked about the information. But I've already think about so everything can happen about my family or about my property or so and so. But practically, I face such a situations. So I'm trying to make calm down and hold the prison wall for a moment. And then, OK, I'm ready to go come along with you. And they bring me to the cemetery. And I pay homage the last time for the body of my mother. So at that time, a very coincidence, I was in iron bars in my, between my legs. So because of the social, uh, how do you call it? So because of my last journey of my mother, they bring back the iron bars. So they try to get rid of the iron bars. Mm -hmm. This is only because of my mother. Just a uh, last journey, the last day of my mother, how much she loved 
the elder son, me. So they just, she just get rid of my iron bars between my legs. Did these memories or these incidents you experienced while you were in prison, how did they affect you? Did it maybe strengthen your desire for change or did it um, perhaps make you lose heart? As a human being, sometimes frustrated, so sometimes so very lonely that to make remember my past experience about my student's life or my friends or my families or so and so. But so all the time, so I try to notice, make notice myself, hey, never surrender, try to survive. So physically or mentally. So that's why so I always try to make exercise every day before taking bath. Or the always try to make meditation so in the prison. And so at that time we have no chance to hold any piece of paper. This is for the severe punishment. But I want to learn eagerly more and more. So that's why I secretly try to take such articles from the Times or Newsweek or so and so, but always hiding so from one place to another. Well, do you have any regrets um, about your activities that led you to prison? No, I never regret. So I always try to be proud of my doing my, my political career. So not only for me, I always encourage the younger generations, their newcomers to the prison. Hey, never regret. Always try to survive. So you need to take care of your health or your learning. So if someone knows m more about the language or the some other uh, skills, so we, need, we try to share each other. So by doing so, we try to survive day by day. You've said that you've paid the price um, for your families, like your mother. Um, you were not there to see on her, on her deathbed. Um, you've sacrificed your youth, you've sacrificed your society, but you are satisfied you, with that sacrifice. You've said that before. But why? What do you think your sacrifice has achieved so far? So the last time I was released in prison, to some of the changes in our country, so whether we like it or not, the 2008 constitution and the 2010 elected parliament and also the government or so and so. And then to some of the media uh, sectors, so a little more freer than before. So this is some of the changes in our country. But we need to notice the, all the political powers and the econ economic powers are still in the hands of the old guys. So that's why in appearance of the changes in our country, but we try to uh, make struggle further more. Do you think your time in prison has strengthened your desire for this change, this push for more reforms? So even in the prison, we try to get information. So what is happening outside? So always try to, and then, so we, uh, if I have a, time to discuss with each other, so we always make a discussion. So if we were released, so what I'm going to do, what we are going to do. So and then some of the interviews with the media and some politicians, I criticize, okay, if I were him, so what I will respond? So uh, this is the, just a uh, practice <laughs> Before. So you were already <laughs> practicing in prison in for prison, the time yes. that you would be released. Yeah. But your last prison sentence was 65 years. 65 years and 6 months, yes. Did you think that you would ever be released? But I have already expected. Oh, you so, knew that they were going to release so, you before uh, because, the... So in 2007, I was arrested again. So at that time, the National Convention was still holding the National Convention. And then the 
US and the EU countries make sanctions on our country and also the ASEAN families, the silent diplomacy, uh, secret mm -hmm. diplomacy to urge the military government so about the seven steps roadmap mm -hmm. or so and so. So for that reason, so they will try to end the national convention and to have a constitution by their own way. So and to hold the election. So after the elections, so mm -hmm. mission accomplished. This is the exit, uh, exit strategy for the previous government. So from the uh, de facto government, transformed to the de jure government, constitutional government. After that, they just try to show off the international community and also the local people. So uh, we are changing now. The very easy way is to release the political prisoner. So they are the constitutional government. So now this is the goodwill of the new government. So that's why the first step after the election. So that constitutional government will release the political prisoner. So you've been called a political strategist of the movement. Do you agree? Always what I'm doing is, so as possible as I can. So some other people call me any other names, so I don't care. So this is the opinions of the others. But I try to, always try to make my best how do you see your role right now in the pro-democracy movement? So I proudly name myself, or our 88 generation self, the catalyst. So to change from the old substance to the new one. So all the time we are thinking, so what we can fulfill for the sake of our country. So you are working very closely with the government now in terms of uh, talks, um, civil-military relations, things like that. But you've also been appointed um, on the Government mis Commission to investigate the Rakhine situation. Um, how did you feel about that? I mean, being part of a government team, the, essentially the regime that puts you in prison, how did you deal with that? So, do have a national reconciliation so we try to make ready for ourselves, so to cooperate with everybody. So uh, not because of our own sentiment or our emotion. So that's why so we, not only by myself, our 88 generations, always finding the common ground, what we are we can cooperate each other, not only the government, I mean. So we visited the parliament many times. And also, so we talk and discuss to the Union Election Commission also. So that's why, so we are ready to cooperate with each other. So, and then the political parties and also the ethnic arms group. But it must take a very strong person to put aside, you know, your feelings, your emotions. After all, you spent almost 20 years in prison, that must, have taken a toll on, on you, right? How did you manage to put all those emotions aside and focus on reconciliation? So from the bright side, if we look to the situation, so our own sacrifices is just like an investment for our future. I mean, not only for my partner, for our, I didn't mean for my partner. So for the country, this is the investment. But what if your investment didn't pay off? <laughs> That's the risk, right? Yes. So if we didn't take such a risk, so our country cannot change. You've been praised by both sides of the struggle. I mean, opposition politicians and government officials attended your wedding in April. So why do you think you are so well regarded by both sides? Uh, this is partly because of my own attitude, I think. And then another part is from the different side of our country. So everybody talk about the reconciliation. So that's why so they will find a proper person or organization to make a understanding between each other. So that's why I repeatedly talk about the, the situation. 
So if I have a good relation with the authority, some of my activists mm. can misunderstand. Mm. Hey, Kogoji is betraying mm. our cause, or he is a very pleased to deal with the authority, or so and so. That's why I always try to make balance mm. my constituency. Okay, whatever I deal with the authority, I will tell you. Mm. So make transparent. So this is a very important. How do you decide when to compromise and when to stick to your principles? So this is just a kind of art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to hold, to keep my convictions and at the same time, so to compromise with each other. So this is, so we always try to keep our aims and objectives mm -hmm. for the long run. But just we need to make step by step. So every step we should have progress. But some people are very dogmatic, you know. So if I cannot get the whole objective, objectives, I cannot accept. Mm. If doing so, we cannot make progress for every step. What are your next steps to form a political party or to join a political party? Maybe Dong San Suu Kyi's NLD? Easy question, but not so easy to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So because so we consider deeply about the situation. So I'm just a little worried about so just a polarization mm -hmm. each other. If so, so nobody can assure our future. So that's why. So we just I'm always thinking, so what we can make go between each other. So I have a relation with the government and also the NLD mm -hmm. and also the parliament and also the ethnic group. So make deal That's with each other. Many, many different yes. parties. How do you... Is there a, a, a constituency or a, a, a group that you feel most close to your heart, your cause? So very clear is, so my background is the activist background, so democratic activist background. So I never give up my constituency. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I will try to deal with the other different opinions or the different organization. Talking about political leaders in Myanmar, it seems like imprisonment, your time in prison is like a badge of honor for political leaders. Like it's almost essential for building political credibility. Do you yes. agree? So as a politician, the public credibility is the major resource to be a politician, but not enough. Only showing my prison certificate. So for the long run, so public will expect how much we can perform for their daily life. So as a politician, so we need to service, make service for the public. But now we are talking about the very uh, literary what's just like a constitution or the PR system, electoral system or federal or so and so. But so practically we try to reach the common people. So to engage in the daily life. What kind of leaders do you think Myanmar wants? And are they the same as the kind of leaders you think that Myanmar needs? So in my view, leader should have a leadership. So they have the vision. So and then they make their public their vision clearly. Mm -hmm. So what they want their country to be for next 10 years or next 20 years. So and then so the leader should have the interaction between the public and the leader. And the policy making process should have a should be a democratic. Why? Why is democracy so important to you? The participation. Mm -hmm. the, and then the responsive each other. But at the same time, so such a situation, a, a transitional situation, the leader should have should be strong, strong leadership. Strong leadership is not the same as the dictator. Mm -hmm. 
So what, what do you mean by strong leader? The decisive, leader I mean. So he or she should be decisive and to take responsibility for his actions. His actions. Do Aung San Suu Kyi once said um, in a uh, meeting with SMU students that uh, being a good leader doesn't mean doing what is popular, but what they believe is right. Do you agree? So th this is a very subtle, I think. So leader try to have a popular support. Mm -hmm. One thing is, but at the same time, he or she should not follow all the time the followers. Mm. So how do you decide when to follow and yes. when not? So why those ordinary people choose a person to be a leader? Mm -hmm. So they expect he or she may be a good, uh, wiser than the followers. They have, he or she will have uh, far-sighted visions or so and so. They have already expected someone to be a leader. So if he or she cannot fulfill their expectation, mm -hmm. he or she cannot survive. Mm -hmm. So what is your vision for Myanmar then? The fundamental problems of our country is two major points. One is the democracy. Second is the ethnic equality. So if we cannot solve those issues, we cannot achieve the development. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we cannot make development for our country. No one can make assure the democracy. Mm. So it's a yes. Circle. The politics and economics cannot separate each other. Mm. Why is ethnic inequality so important in um, development? Come along with our independence. Mm. The ethnic problems or ethnic struggles for their equal rights, the political, economic and social or so and so, still known. So now the government tried to have a nationwide ceasefire mm -hmm. accord, but so repeat uh, again and again postponed mm -hmm. to have a ceasefire agreement. So but from the ethnic side, so they have experienced such a ceasefire agreement in the past mm -hmm. years. So this time, they just want to make sure, not only the ceasefire agreement, after the ceasefire agreement, so they just want to make sure the political dialogue and the political process. So now, so still discussing, negotiating to have a ceasefire. Thank you very much, Kokoji, for speaking with us. Yes, thank you also.